University of Pennsylvania football, the Penn Quakers and the Harvard Crimson. Penn and Harvard, a big, big crowd on hand here at Franklin Field. Both teams are 6-2 and two overall. Both are 4-1 and one in the Ivy League. Penn losses to Lafayette and Princeton. Harvard lost to Army and Dart. 22 years have passed since the University of Pennsylvania won an Ivy League football title. Today, on a blustery afternoon at Franklin Field, Penn can clinch a tie for that title. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Merrill Reese, all set to send you the action as Penn and Harbor, the two first-place teams, collide. Penn co-captain Mike Christiani summed up the team feeling when he said, it is the biggest football game of our lives. Handling the color commentary once again, Ken Schmeri is with us, the former head coach at Penn Charter, a former Penn lightweight football player, and presently the headmaster of the Woodland School. Penn wearing their home uniforms, their dark navy jerseys with their red numerals, Harvard with white jerseys, gold pants, and maroon numerals. Harvard has won the toss, so the Quakers will be kicking off as Harvard has elected to receive. Perhaps on this day, that is an advantage for Penn. Here is the kickoff as Armstrong holds it and Shulman boosts it. High, deep, end over end, out of the end zone. No run back. They will bring it out to the 20-yard line. So Penn in this first quarter will have the wind at their backs, and Harvard will be throwing into the wind. Harvard uses a multiplex offense, which means they do so many things. Here is the first offensive play of the day. They line up in a double wing. Motion to the near side. The handoff goes to Steve Ernest. Good running room as he comes across the 25, up to the 26 or 27. Kevin Bradley makes the tackle for Penn. Bradley, the leading tackler of the Quakers. A pickup on that play of seven yards. So for the Crimson, a second down and three. The football on the 27-yard line. Again, it is a double wing. The pitch goes to Granger, the fullback. Coming off tackle across the 30, across the 35, and up to the 37-yard line where Ross Armstrong makes the tackle of the Quakers' secondary. But a first down for Harvard, and they will spot the football at about the 37-yard line. First and 10 on a pitch again to Granger off right tackle across the 40, and he is stacked up at the 42-yard line. Jim Cook makes the stop. Now, very often, the Harvard running plays will go to the right side, and there's a big reason for that. Senior by the name of Greg Brown. Second down and five for Harvard at the 42. The handoff to Ernst off the wing across the 45. Fumbles the football. Picked up by Penn. Ross Armstrong, who runs it out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Tim Chambers made the hit on Steve Ernst. The ball flew into the air, and it was fielded by Ross Armstrong in the air, and he took it out of the 40-yard line to the first turnover of the game. Goes to Penn, and the Quakers offense on the field. The tailback, Steve Flacco. The give is to Ruben, who fumbles the football. There is a fight for the ball. We will see. Penn thinks they were on it. Penn thinks they were on it. And it might have been Mark Humbro who dove on top of the football. He did and recovered the football. Penn lost a couple of yards on the play. But that is minimal compared to the damage that might have been done if the ball had been turned back to Harvard. So a loss of two on the play if Steve Rubin fumbled the football. Now Chuck Newman, uh, Chuck Nolan comes in and Steve Rubin goes out. Slot to the far side, second down and 12 for the Quakers, who still have the ball. Second down and 12, Gary Bura on a keeper. Comes across the 40, back across the 37, down close to the 36-yard line. Gary Bura on the quarterback keep. Joe Azelby makes the stop for Harvard, but for Penn it will be third down at about eight. As you mentioned at the beginning of the show, Steve Rubin got a start today at the fullback position, which is a new situation for him. They gave him the ball on first down. Maybe he was a little tentative, and fortunately, Penn got the ball back. Third and eight at the uh, Harbor 37-yard line. Tight end goes to the far side of the field. Schulte, Bureau on play action, being chased. Close to pass. Complete to Schulte for a first down at the 25. Jeff Schulte. Big block thrown on the offensive line by McInerney, Glanz, and Demaria, giving Gary Bureau time to find his favorite target, Jeff Schulte, who took it deeper in the Harbor territory at the 25-yard line. Schulte has 22 receptions on the year. That ties in with Carl Hall. And, of course, he is the leading receiver in terms of touchdowns. First and 10 for the Quakers, driving at the Harvard 25. The give to the tailback, Flacco, across the 25, across the 22. And Steve Flacco down at the 20-yard line. Andy Nolan makes the stop for Harvard. Nice balance so far in the Penn offense. That was a very important completion for Gary Buer. It was a little simple pattern where they had twins to the right side, and Jeff Schulte dragged underneath the coverage. He had to leap very high in the air, make a tremendous catch. It's got to build confidence for both players. A pickup of five yards on the carry. A second down and five. 
drive for the Quakers. Chuck Golden remains in as the up back. A wing to the near side. Jeff Shorty the tight end. Now he goes in motion to the far side. The handoff goes to Flacco, who leaps over a man at the 20 and is still on his feet as he is finally dragged out at the 15, where he will be very, very close to another first down. We will see where they spot the football. From here, it appears that he is about a half yard away. Randy Scott made the tackle for Harvard, and he is less than a yard away from the first down marker. So third down and make it about a half yard. No score in the game. 10.46 remaining in the first quarter. 10 on the move. It is a full house tee for the Quakers. Full house tee as Bura turns, gives off to Nolan, who sends down to the 10 and has a first down. Chuck Nolan on the carry, following a block by Mark Hembro on a first and 10 for the Quakers. They spot the ball right on the 10 yard line. Mike Dixon makes the stop for Harvard. Make it a first and goal from the 10. And I do not believe he can get a first down. Has to score a touchdown. The backs in the eye. First and 10 for the Quakers at the Harvard 10. Backs in the eye. The wide receivers are split. Mura into a long count. He pitches out to Flacco, who will not get far. He is hit at the nine. Maybe he gets as far as the eight, but not much more as Andy Nolan makes the stop. That is the third carry for Steve Flacco. He has picked up 10 yards. Randy Scott and Joe Margolis also in on the tackle. So second down and goal from the Harvard eight. Harvard's creating a couple of different looks up front for the Penn offensive line to recognize. The backs are in the eye. Again, a long count by Gary Bura. He is rolling, still rolling carrying himself, and he doesn't get more than maybe two yards as he is tackled close to the five-yard line. Pat Fleming on the stop, and I think Gary Bura had the option as he was looking for a receiver to clear. Nobody did, and he carried it down to the five-yard line. It will be third down and goal from the five. Third and goal as Bura retreats. He's looking, he's looking, he fires. The pass is juggled and dropped. The pass is juggled and dropped by Jeff Schulte. He would not have been in the end zone. He was at about the two-yard line as he dove for the ball, had it momentarily. There is a penalty flag and a holding call against Penn. So even if he had caught it, it wouldn't have mattered because Penn is going to be called for holding right here. Harvard is going to decline. Dave Shulman is on, and Gary Bureau will be the holder. So it'll be a 27-yard attempt with the wind at his back. The ball is spotted. The kick is away. It's long enough. It's good. Penn's on the board. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Pennsylvania 3, Harvard nothing. That Penn drive was 10 plays for 28 yards, culminated by the 27-yard field goal by Dave Schulman. Penn capitalizing on a recovery of a Harvard fumble. Penn is plus 11 in the turnover department this, this year, and that is one of the very biggest reasons for their success. It's 3-0 Penn. That was not a timeout charged to Penn. It was a delay of game, which we understand they took purposely to give Schulman a better angle. Here is his kickoff. It is high, end over and bouncing in and then through the end zone, and Harvard will not run it back again as they will spot it out at the 20-yard line. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in quarter number one. Donnie Allard sets his offense. He goes again to a double wing, sends his wide receiver to the far side of the field. George comes in motion to the near side, and the handoff goes inside. It goes to Jim Garvey on a wing back around. Kevin Bradley makes the stop for Penn. One of the things that the Penn defense is trying to do today is just stay very basic. They know that they're going to get blocked from all different angles, from all different looks, but it's still a very basic, simple approach that Harvard's using, and Penn's trying to avoid that confusion. Second down and five. Again, it is a double wing formation. Play action by the quarterback, Allard, who is rolling to the near side, and he goes belted out of bounds at the 22-yard line, and he will lose on that play as Matt Finn had excellent pursuit on Donnie Allard and ran him out of bounds. Ran him out of bounds. David Smith also putting an awful lot of pressure on the passer. So it'll be a third down and seven for Harvard as Donnie Allard loses two yards on that play. Again, a double wing. Allard on a straight drop back, looking close the pass, incomplete. He wanted to go to his fullback, Mike Granger. The ball was incomplete, and some very intense pressure applied by Penn's left tackle, Jim Miller, and Harvard will have to punt. Have to punt against the wind. Here is Jim Villanueva's punt. It is a high floater, and Tim Chambers will call for it, and 
take a fair catch at his own 45-yard line. First and 10 for Penn. They're at their own 45-yard line. 7.48 remaining to be played here in the first quarter. Steve Rubin back in as the up back. In motion to the far side goes the tailback Flacco. The handoff goes to Rubin, who bounces off people, but the most he can get is a yard, a yard and a half, maybe two yards. And I'm sure the one thing Gary Bureau wanted there was to go to Steve Rubin, give him the opportunity to handle the football on his first carry today. He coughed the ball off your side. The backs are in the eye. Gary Bura faking. He sets up. Looking. Bombing deep downfield. Incomplete. The intended receiver was thrown at the 30-yard line. And the crowd is booing. They are screaming and yelling that Rich Sirick was interfered with. He was down at the 30-yard line. There was definitely a collision out there. John Daly for Harvard knocked Sirick down while the ball was in the air. He didn't intend to do it, but I believe that's got to be interference. So for Penn, it is a third down and nine. Gary Bureau retreats again. He looks. He swings it out to Flacco at the 45. Flacco running to the near side, across midfield, and into Harvard territory at the 49-yard line. The ball comes loose after the whistle. And while Steve Flacco did a lot of running on the play, he will still come up a good four or five yards short of the first down. As he came across the 45-yard line, and actually from the point at which he caught the ball, ran for about eight or nine yards, but from scrimmage it was only about four yards. So Penn is in a fourth down and five, and Dave Bottomore comes in the game to punt. He gets it off. The ball is kicked end over end, bouncing across the 15, rolling at the 10, at the 9, and it is down by Penn at the 9. There is also a penalty flag thrown at the 49-yard line, and we will wait to see what is called right there. It could be a legal procedure against the Quakers. Offsides against Harvard. It is offsides against Harvard. So it should be enough for a first down for Penn. We'll see where they mark the football. It was in a fourth down and five. And it should be enough for a first down for Penn. It will be a first down for Penn. First and ten for Penn at the Harvard 44. Bureau gives off to Flacco, who spins across the 45 and is tripped up at the 44 or 43. Actually lost a couple of yards initially and then kept spinning his way till he crossed the 44 or 45. And all he did was get back to the original line of scrimmage before Pat Fleming made the stop. Coming in motion is Jeff Schulte, the tight end. Bura keeping himself on his feet as he stumbles across the 44, but very, very little as Scott Muir, a very, very tough middle guard, makes the stop, and Gary Bura will not reach the 40-yard line, so it'll bring up a third down and seven, third down and seven. The football on the Harvard 41, 518 remaining in the first quarter. The wide receivers are split. The backs in the eye. Gary Bura on play action, has time. He's looking. He throws the ball. Complete inside the 25-yard line. He has Warren Bueller with a big first down. He puts it on the money to Warren Bueller on a deep slant on the money for 18 yards. First down, 10. Pennsylvania caught Harvard in a man-to-man -man defensive coverage that time. They sent a couple of linebackers forcing the secondary receiver, secondary defensive backs to play man, and uh, a great throw and a great catch by Warren Bueller. The give is to Flacco. Flacco getting very little as he bounces off people. Now comes to the near side, bangs his way across the 20, down to the 18, where Mike Dixon makes the stop. Mike Dixon carries Steve Flacco, but Steve Flacco showing his resilience as he bounces off of people, almost pinball style. He hit a wall formed by Muir and Azelby and then just bounced back about a yard, stayed on his feet, came to the outside and picked up five yards. Receivers are split and Harvard will come off sides. The Crimson will come off sides as Gary Bura probably using a stutter count. So it will be second down and less than a yard for Penn. He goes for the sure yard and he gets it as Steve Flacco takes the pitch and carries people almost down to the 10-yard line. He'll be stacked up by Joe Azelby and Andy Nolan, but not before he picks up about two and a half or three yards and they will spot it at the 10 and a half yard line, first and 10 for Penn. So Penn can pick up a first down without a touchdown if they get to the half-yard mark. O'Toole in the slot. First and 10 for the Quakers. The back start out of the eye. Bureau rolling. Pitches to Flacco on his feet at the 10, and he gets down to about the 9. Andy Nolan makes the stop, and this Harvard defense is playing the run very effectively. They don't give much. At that time, of course, they tried the option to the wide side of the field, and Gary Bureau made the pitch to Steve Flacco, who tried to come back against the grain. The fellows in the white shirts were waiting for them. So for Penn, it is a second down and 8. Fulte comes in motion. Gary Bureau rolling to the near side. Still rolling. Still rolling. Loops the ball for the end zone incomplete. Touched by Rich Sirius.
here. Like he would have had a tough time bringing it down as he was falling. He was falling to his right and his back to the goalpost. He reached up. Jeff Shorty was behind him. They had two men basically in the same zone. And Rich Shurek reached up as he was falling. He touched it with his fingertips, could not bring it down. So for Penn, it is a third down and eight. Bura in motion. He looks, fires, complete touchdown, Penn. John Basturia alone in the end zone. Great faking by quarterback Gary Bura as he faked inside and then rolled to the far side. And John Basturia was open in the corner of the end zone and he took it for the touchdown. Penn leads 9 nothing. Beautiful execution on the part of everybody in the blue jerseys for Pennsylvania. Schulman for the extra point. The ball is spotted. The kick is up. The kick is good. There's a timeout on the field with the score. 10-10, ten, ten, Harvard nothing. It's 10-0, Penn, with 224 remaining in the first quarter, and this Penn offense has been something. Taking advantage of breaks, they took advantage of a Harvard fumble and went in for the field goal, the Schulman field goal on their first score. And there they took care of, a, took advantage of a Harvard offsize that gave them new life after a punt. A very large crowd on hand here at Franklin Field. It appears larger than the Yale game when they had uh, a crowd of over 30. This crowd must be somewhere around the 40 mark. Schulman tees it up. Here is his kickoff again. It is high, end over end. Taken by McNally at the six. Up across the 10, on his feet at the 15, comes to the 20, and is he ever belted and dropped at the 20-yard line? This Penn team is really fired up. And isn't it something to look across the way at the Penn side, and it is packed. John Waterfield makes the stop. The Crimson of Harvard breaks from the huddle. 10 nothing Penn. First and 10 for Harvard at their own 20. A double wing, vacating the wing as Steve Ernst takes the handoff, goes to the 22, and that is it. Maybe the 22 and a half. Steve Ernst came off the wing, took the handoff, and Bill Lester was there. A minute and 55 seconds remaining to be played. The pitch goes to Granger, the fullback, and he gets to the 25, and he is stopped as Christiani makes the first hit. The Quakers scoring drive with 11 plays, 54 yards, 10 plays on their first drive, so ball control exhibited by the Quakers. The Harvard third down and five, the ball on the 25. In motion comes Garvey, back the throw goes Donnie Allard, fires the ball to Ernst, complete at the 30, and he should have the first down. We'll see where they spot it. It will be very, very close. Jim Cook makes the stop for Penn, but the first down is attained by Harvard as they manage to move the football across the 30. First and 10 for Harvard. The football at the 30 and a half. A double wing slot. Vacating the slot is Ernst. Ernst comes to the near side. Comes across the 35 up to the 36. Tim Chambers makes the stop on Steve Ernst. A pickup of a couple of yards right there. Make it about five or six yards. Ernst has carried the football three times for 16 yards this afternoon. 11 seconds remaining as Donnie Adler lies up Harvard in a second down and four. The ball at the 36. Play action as Adler keeps. He runs across the 35, comes up to the 40, and is gutted right there by Scott Boggio and Mike Cristiani. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. There's the end of the first quarter. There's a timeout on the field with the score. 10-10, Harvard nothing. Merrill Reese and Henchmary back at Franklin Field getting set for action to begin here in the second quarter. It is 10-0, Penn. Harvard has the football just inside their own 40-yard line, so it'll be third down and less than a yard for the Crimson. Johnny Allard lines them up and again sets the same formation, the double wing. In motion to the near side comes Steve Burns. It's Allard himself carrying for the first down. He is thrown back, and the crowd gets very enthusiastic as Bill Lister and Kevin Bradley knock him back. So first and 10 for Harvard is Donnie Allard's keeper worked right there. First and 10. Opening seconds of action here in the second quarter. 10-0 the Quakers. A double wing again. Ranger the lone setback. In motion comes Ernst. The handoff goes to the fullback. Big running room for Granger as he comes spinning across the 45, spinning across midfield, and in the Penn territory for the first time today at the 48-yard line where Tim Chambers makes the stop. But a big opener and 12 yards again by Mike Granger on the play for Harvard. Again the double wing. This time the handoff to Granger who breaks a tackle or two and comes across the 45 and deeper in the Penn territory at the 43 where David Smith makes the stop. 
Penn is up 10 to nothing, but this is a very, very big Harvard team. A very physical offensive line, which has been their key all along. This time it's a double wing slot. The second down and five. The handle goes to the wing. Steve Ernst, who comes across the 40 and plows close to the 36-yard line, where he will have enough for another first down. Matt Finn makes the stop for Penn. An important series for the Penn defense here. They had a critical play on third down at the end of the quarter, where if they had stopped Harvard and forced them to punt into the wind, it would have been an advantage for Penn. They didn't get it. It's first and 10 for Harvard on the Penn 36. Again, a single setback. The pitch goes off to Garvey, the wingback, who comes inside and crosses the 35 and comes down to about the 32. Scott Boggio made the stop. Garvey on his second carry today, and then of eight yards. So they are using their wings as running back. They do that very often. Second down and seven. In motion goes Garvey off the wing to the far side of the field. The pass intercepted by Penn. Bradley picks it off, and the Quakers have the ball back. Donnie Allard went on a quick look at pass as he faked it inside, gunned it over the middle to Steve Hurst. But Kevin Bradley was right there. He reached up, brought it down, flung it to his chest, and took it across the 35-yard line. There is another turnover. Let's see if Penn can take advantage. First and 10 on the road, 37. First and 10 for Penn. Steve Rubin back in and motion to the near side comes the tight end. Gary Bura on a keeper across the 40, across the 45. Up the midfield comes Gary Bura for the Penn first down. Joe Margolis makes the stop, but Gary Bura with 14 yards on the option. He was running and looking towards a man to pitch to, and I think the Harvard defense committed themselves, and Gary Bura galloped for 14 yards, has the ball just on the Penn side of the field at the 49 and a half. A slot formation to the far side. First and 10 for the Quakers. The backs are in the eye. Long count. This time it is a pitch to the tailback. Coming across midfield is Steve Rubin, and he will come into Harvard territory at the 47-yard line where Stan Martin makes the stop along with Louis Versamis. It seems almost as if Penn's offense has decided that this is going to be their day. The defense has gotten so much credit in their prior wins that they've established themselves very effectively here in the early going. Second down and seven for the Penn offense. They have the football at the Harvard 47-yard line. But the backs are in the eye. Gary Bura keeping again. Pitches out to Rubin across the 45 and down to the 41. He will be close to a first down as Gary Bura pitched the ball wide to Steve Rubin. Joe Margolis made the stop for the Crimson, but he will come up about a yard and a half shy of the first down. So it is third and about one and a half. They spot the football at the Harvard 42. They will line up in a full half. T. He fakes. He gives off inside to Chuck Nolan, and we will see where they mark his forward progress. He will be close to a first down, but there are a pile of people on Chuck Nolan. They spot it at the 40, and they point forward. First down, Penn. First and 10 for the Quakers, and this time they set up on the slot formation to the near side. The backs are in the eye. Penn up 10 to nothing. Second quarter action. Gary Bura on play action, rolling to the far side, still rolling. Fires the pass out of bounds. And that time he was just trying to get rid of it. He was also hit pretty hard and is a bit slow getting up, but he's all right. But Gary Bura that time had a lot of pressure and did a good job of just getting his balance back as he was rolling to the far side of the field and throwing it out of bounds. Joe Asselby rushing the passer. Second down and 10 for Penn. The football spotted on the Harvard 40. Bura gives off underneath the Rubin, and Harvard read that one, and they dropped Steve for a loss of a yard. It's a little wingback trap play that they've used several times in the course of the year. With much success earlier in the season, they shift Rubin up into the slot on the left side, and he comes back in motion, takes an inside handle. That time, Harvard had either watched the films or were, had guessed right in the defense, but Rubin got stuck there right at the line of scrimmage. A slot to the near side of the field. The football at the 41-yard line as Gary Bura comes back. He is rolling. He stops, fires across the middle. Completes the pass at the 25-yard line. And making the catch is Nick Searick. Rick Searick leaping into the air. He really withstood a hit. I mean, Rick Searick went up, and he was absolutely pulverized by Mike Dixon. But the 5-975 pounder from Malvern managed to hold on. A 17-yard gain for the Quakers. First and 10 of the Harvard 24. Gary Bura floated the ball a bit, and Rick Searick was belted. First and ten for the Quakers. In motion to the far side goes Rubin. Lines up with a wing. Single setback. Wide receiver split. Bura straight back. He's looking close to pass. Complete to Jim O'Brien. 
complete to Jim O'Toole. O'Toole with the reception inside the 15, down at the 14-yard line. Jim O'Toole, another first down for Penn, as Gary Bura is right on the money. Gary Bura is 6 for 10, 71 yards. Penn up, 10 to nothing. They're driving again at the Harvard 14. Asturia comes back in. He is set to the near side of the field. In motion comes Reuben. He is set now as a wing to the near side of the field. The give inside to Chuck Nolan, who spins his way close to the 10-yard line. Chuck Nolan on the carry. Picks up about four right there. Bruno Perdoni makes the tackle for Harvard. Nolan's third carry of the day for 11 yards. Hasselby also in on the stop. So for Penn, a second down and six. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. It's Penn up 10 to nothing, and the Quakers want more. Muir to the far side. Ruben sets up as a wing to the far side. Nolan the lone setback. Mura drops. Mura fires. Mura completes it to Ruben at the five. On his feet at the four. They say he stepped out of bounds at the five, however, where he will be about a yard shy of a first down. Steve Rubin that time a receiver coming off the wing, and Gary Bura on target again. Joe Margolis, the man who knocked him out of bounds. So a third down and a yard. Eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the first half. Ten leading, and they want to increase the margin. One wide receiver to the far side of the field. O'Toole in motion to the near side. The back's in the eye. The hand off to Rubin, who jumps deep and out of the way and has the first down. Steve Rubin across the five and down to the three. Against Princeton, Steve Rubin was hit three times between the five-yard line and the end zone. That time, he was hit about three times on that short trip of two yards, but he gets the football down to the three with the Quakers in a first and goal at the three. 7.49 remaining in the first half. Long count by Bura. Pitches to his tailback. Coming to the near side and leaning forward is Steve Rubin. He will get nothing. He will be fortunate just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Louis Versamis, who plays what Harvard calls an adjacent, but is really a rover back in effect, is the man who makes the stop right there. And it'll be second down and goal from the Quakers at the three-yard line. Our statistician, Bob Cherry, reminds me that Gary Bura has completed his last four passes into the wind. Now Amos goes in motion. Bura has the ball off inside, and it is Nolan getting down to about the one. Nolan gets back to and down to about the one-yard line where Pat Fleming makes the stop. Six and a half minutes remaining to be played in the first half. 10-10, Harvard nothing. Merrill Reese and Hench Mary here at Franklin Field hoping you're enjoying the game. Saying hello to 10 alumni everywhere. Third down and goal. The ball at the one. A full house tee. Everybody in tight. Bura gives it off to Nolan, who spins to the goal line. He will not get in. Joe Margolis makes the stop. And now, head coach Jerry Burke is faced with a decision. It is fourth down and goal, and Penn will call a timeout. The football is at the... Well, it is at about the yard line. Let's see where they spot it. At the one. It's not at the half-yard line. It is a full yard away. Penn is up 10 to nothing. Do you bring in the field goal kicker at this point and try to go up 13 to nothing? They set up in the full house, too. They give Harvard the running look again. Let's see if it's a quarterback keep or what they do. Bura calls for the football. He gives off. They won't get it. As diving into the air is Chuck Nolan, and he cannot get in. And the Harvard defense comes off the field with their arms raised. Chuck Nolan on successive downs gained about a half yard, and that is it. As Chuck Nolan thought he could go over the Harvard defense, and he could not. Andy Nolan and Joe Asselby made the stop. But give the Harvard defense credit because they tightened right there and they stopped Penn at the half-yard line. 5.57 remaining in the first half. It is 10 nothing Penn. Quakers drove as far as the half-yard mark and could not get in. Harvard lines up with the backs in their own end zone. The handoff goes to Granger, who goes as far as the one, and that is it for him. A pickup of about the yard, a half yard, a yard by Mike Granger. Doesn't even get a yard. Make it about the 
a quarter of a yard. Granger remains the lone setback as Donnie Allard lines them up and again goes to Granger, who flies across the five and is knocked off his feet at the six and lands at the seven. So Harvard in a third down and a long three as they now have the football at about their own seven and a half yard line. The other wing is Garvey. The pitch goes to Ernst and he has fumbled the football and falls on it. Mike Ernst, the fullback, fumbled the football then flopped down on it. Very, very wisely didn't attempt to scoop it up. And Harvard will have to punt and Penn should have good enough field possession to try again. They should have some very good field position after this punt by Jim Villanueva. Here is the punt. John Waterfield on the near side. Looks up. Takes it at the 45. Fumbles. Picks it up. Returns it to midfield. And he is pushed back there. But he will go to the 49 and a half yard line. Just on the Harvard side of the field. Where Mike Mead makes the stop for the Crimson. Four minutes and eight seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Ten leading Harvard. Ten to nothing. The Quakers got as far as the Harvard half yard line on that last drive. Harvard held. But so did the Penn defense. And Penn's offense is back on the field. First to and 10 at the Harvard 49 and a half. Rich Searick split wide to the far side of the field. Warren Bueller to the near side. The backs at an open set. Amos and Flacco. Now Flacco lines up as a wing to the near side. Amos directly behind quarterback Gary Bura. First and 10 for the Quakers as the Harvard uh, Crimson fake the blitz. Then Bueller just hands off strictly inside. He goes to Rick Amos who bangs into a few people and takes the football and carries it down to about the 46-yard line. A pickup of three yards on the play by Rick Amos. So a second down and seven for Penn. 3.47 remaining in the first half. The near side, Bueller. One setback. That is Amos. Flacco is the wingback. The give is by Gura, who holds it himself, takes it inside, carries it down to the 40, and let's see where they spot it. He won't be far from a first down. Versami's made the stop for Harvard, but Gary Bura picks up yardage on the play, six yards to be exact. And he has the ball within a yard of a first down. Jolty, the tight end, comes in motion to the near side of the field. Bura gives off to his fullback. And Rick Amos has the first down. Amos that time on just straight ahead running. Matt Fleming makes the stop. They've caused some confusion so far. Penn is seven for nine today on third down efficiency. First and ten for the Quakers at the Harvard 39. Hero wants to throw. He loads up. He's going deep down the middle. The pass is banged around and it is intercepted by Harvard. A tremendous interception in the end zone. Harvard comes up with it in the person of John Daly, who knocked it in the air. It was intended for Jim O'Toole, who was running a deep post pattern for Penn. And Gary Bura got the ball out there. It was a matter of receiver and defensive back running stride for stride. And Daly managed to get his hands in, tip the ball into the air, and then field it in the end zone. So Harvard has the ball back. First and 10 for Harvard. The ball at their own 20. They'll bring it out to the 20. O'Brien to the far side. They hand the pitch goes to Ranger, the tailback, who carries it all the way across the 30-yard line as he runs hard to the far side of the field. Comes up to the 31 where Ross Armstrong makes the stop in the Penn secondary. But a pickup on the play of about 11 or 12 yards. Now they say he went out of bounds closer to the 35-yard line. They will spot it at, let's see, precisely the 34. So a pickup of 14 yards vacating the wing of Steve Burns. The handoff goes to Jim Garvey, the other wing, and he comes across the 35 and comes up to the 37-yard line, maybe the 38. Scott Boggio made the stop for Penn. Have to be very impressed with the coaching job that the Pennsylvania people have done with their young players out there. They're staying at home. They're reading their keys. They're not being fooled by a lot of the misdirection that Harvard's trying to throw at them. He comes off the wing in motion to the near side. Aller, the quarterback, rolls on that side, waves people downfield, fires the football. In Garvey drops it at the Penn 35. Garvey was open. Jim Garvey was open at the Penn 35-yard line. The ball was well thrown, but he had managed to get between Mike Oaken and Ross Armstrong but he could not bring it down and Donnie Allard is only one for four for a total of five yards here in the first half. Third down of six for Harvard. The ball on the their own 38. Back goes Allard again. He's looking. Fires to the far side. Has Garvey and he drops it in the clear again. Garvey on successive plays has dropped balls late in his hands. That time he looked the ball into his numbers and then it hit his numbers and bounced back. So Penn gets a break as twice in a row the Harvard receiver, the same man, Jim Garvey, just flat out drops the football and Harvard will have to punt. A minute and 38 remaining in the first half. Penn up 10-0 and he gets away a beauty. It is 
spiraling at the 9. Tim Chambers takes it across the 10, across the 15, and grudgingly gets ground to the 20-yard line as two or three men come over, led by Mark Mead, to make the tackle. So with 125 remaining in the first half and 10 with the wind blowing in their faces, will line up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Things have gone very well for Penn. I think if you ask Coach Jerry Burke before the game, would you settle for a 10 nothing halftime lead? He would have hugged you. He would have said, absolutely. First and 10 for the Quakers. The backs are in the eye. Shorty, the tight end, comes off the wing to the far side and motion to the near side. Bure gives off to the tailback, but he won't go far. Flacco gets to the 21-yard line, and that is it, a gain of a yard. And hence, it would seem that Penn would be wise right here to run away those seconds on the clock and get out of this half with a 10-0 lead. Second down and nine for Penn, 57 seconds remaining. The backs are in the eye as Bure takes his time, shows a great deal of poise as he looks over the defense. He pitches out to Flacco, who runs hard to the far side, fumbles the football out of bounds. Fumbled out of bounds, but it will stop the clock with 40 seconds remaining, which is not exactly what he wanted to do right there. Joe Margolis and Andy Nolan made the stop, and one of the ways to eat up those seconds is you run the football wide, but uh, then when you fumble it out of bounds, you defeat your own purpose. Flacco sets up as a wing to the far side. Amos, the lone setback. And the handoff goes to Flacco underneath, breaks a tackle across the 30, up to the 35, and Steve Flacco runs for the first down as Mike Dixon and Louis Versamis make the stop, and Penn should be able to erase those seconds right here. They move the chains, the clock begins to tick. 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Bura pitches to Flacco, who wants to throw, decides to run across the 40, across the 45, across midfield and into Harbor territory at the 48, with nine seconds remaining, and Penn's calling a timeout. They aren't going to sit on any kind of lead. They're not going to sit on any kind of lead, and we have nine seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. It is 10-0 Penn. Wide receivers are split. Flacco sets up as a wing to the far side. Amos the lone setback as Gary Bureau wants to go to the air. He's rolling. He fires to Amos, who is tripped up at midfield, and that will do it. Pat Fleming makes the tackle, and that will do it for the half. Here is the end of a very entertaining first half. That's the end of the half. The score, 10-10, Harvard Dunham. Here is Showman's kickoff to begin the second half. It is end over end. It is deep in the end zone, and Mark Vignali will not bring it out. As he kneels eight yards deep, they will march the ball up to the 20-yard line, and Donnie Aller, the Harvard quarterback, will bring his offense onto the field. So it'll be first and 10 for Harvard at their own 20-yard line. The wind, of course, is a big factor today, but first and 10 for Harvard at their own 20. The handoff goes inside to Scott McCabe, and he doesn't gain. In fact, he loses a yard. The statistics that we've just been handed show time of possession, almost a, a complete reversal from what we're used to seeing with Pennsylvania. Penn controlled the ball for 19 minutes and 41 seconds. Harvard, 10 minutes and 19 seconds, almost a 2-to-1 ratio. McCabe comes off his wing and motion to the far side. Allard running on the quarterback option, carries it across the 20, is tripped up at the 23, falls forward to the 25. Mike Cristiani makes the tackle for Penn. So for Harvard, it's going to be third down at about four and a half about four and a half. Again, a double wing. The pitch goes to Granger, the tailback, who spins away from people, comes across the 30 and has a first down. Penn had him hemmed in. Penn had Mike Granger hemmed in at the line of scrimmage, and he just kept spinning away from people. The double wing with Mike Granger remaining in as the lone setback. The handoff goes to the wing, Scott McCabe, and he penetrates the Penn defense as far as the 33-yard line, where Mike Christiani makes the stop. We are in the opening minutes of play here in quarter number three. It is Penn 10, Harvard nothing. A pickup of three yards by McCabe on that play, presenting Harvard with a second down and seven. The ball on their own 33. A Penn stands packed across the way. Granger in motion to the near side and back goes Allard, but I believe it's going to be too much time for Harvard as Harvard took a long time and instead of a second down and seven, they will have a second down and 12. That appears to be the call. They tried to run some motion after they had come up through the line of scrimmage. Oh. Ranger goes in motion to the far side. Aller floats it over the middle, completes the pass. The Garvey across the 30, but he comes down close to the original line of scrimmage. Just a short gain as Jim Garvey is the receiver. Bill Liston makes the tackle for Penn, and Harvard will find itself in a third down and nine. 
Third down and nine for the Crimson. Motion to the near side. Scott McCabe comes off the wing. Allard is rolling to the near side. Still rolling. Close the football downfield. Incomplete. Looking for McCabe at the pen. 45. Well covered by Mike Oaken. Mike Oaken with Scott McCabe. And Allard is out two for seven. Allard and Harvard not getting much out of the air game today. So Harvard has to punt. And a fourth down and eight. The football on their own. 32-yard line. And then the wave it comes in the game. This time the punt with the wind against him. Deep for Penn. Tim Chambers to the near side. John Waterfield to the far side. Here is the punt by Villanueva. It is a high floater. Waterfield takes it at the 28. Gets away from the man at the 30, but is run out of bounds at the 33 and a half. And the Penn offense comes on the field. 11 and a half minutes remaining in quarter number three. And Penn is leading Harvard 10 nothing. So the Penn defense does the job once again. Absolutely. And again, as you mentioned, that penalty, the delay game, really hurt Harvard. They had a, a second down and six. The penalty put it back to second and 11. They had a nice little completion of a play-action pass but were unable to complete it on third down. Forced the punt. Penn's got a chance to put some points on the board again. The wide receivers are split on first down. It's Bureau pitching the ball out to Flacco. Flacco runs it hard up to the 40-yard line where he is banged out of bounds by Mike Dixon. Steve Flacco on the carry, picking up about seven yards in the play. Make it six as they say that he stepped out of bounds at the 39-yard line. They say that he stepped out of bounds at the 39, so it is a second down and four for Penn. Bura sets the offense. Bura gives off the Flacco, cuts to the outside, across the 40, on his feet at the 45, and Steve Flacco runs out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Some dipsy doodling there by Steve Flacco, who was all hemmed in as he tried the inside route, then lowered the shoulder and maintained his balance, took it to the outside, came across the 45, went out at the 47. The backs in the eye, the wide receiver split. Gary Bura drops straight back. He fires into the middle. Complete, completes the pass to Rick Sirick, who comes across the 30, and Sirick is tackled at the 26 by Brian Bergstrom. Rick Sirick with his second completion today. Rick Sirick with another reception. The first time he really paid a price as he withstood a bone-jarring belt. And he hung on to the football. That time it was a quick slant, and he came between the defenders, and he picked up 28 yards. Asturia comes in. Sirick goes out. First and 10 for Pan. The ball at the Harvard 27-yard line. The handoff goes inside. It goes to Rick Amos, and he drags a few people down to the third 25-yard line. But not much more as Joe Hazelby makes the stop for the Crimson. So Hazelby makes the stop, a pickup of two yards on the play by Rick Amos. What a game so far for little Rick Sirick. Sirick has two receptions, but for a total of 43 yards. Flacco is set as a wing. The wide receivers are split. Bureau wants to throw. He loads up. He looks over the middle and completes it at the 20 to Jeff Shorty, his tight end. Jeff Shorty, the tight end this time. And he will be close to a first down. He will be shy of it as Louis Versams makes the stop for Harvard. But he will be about two yards shy of a first down. Goes in motion to the far side. The back's in the eye. Bureau rolling. Bureau throwing. Bureau completing to O'Toole. Across the 15. Out of bounds at the 13. But another first down as Brian Bergstrom bangs O'Toole out of bounds. But boy, was O'Toole open. I mean, there was the man within five yards of him as Gary Bureau picked inside and rolled to the far side and had Jim O'Toole wide, wide open. If you're a Pennsylvania fan, it's certainly a pretty thing to watch. Bureau. Gives the ball off inside. Amos across the 10. Amos across the 9. And Amos tackled at the 8. Or maybe the 7 as Dixon makes the stop for Harvard. But Rick Amos on the carry that time. Andy Nolan also in on the tackle. So it is Rick Amos that time with a pickup of 4 yards on the play. 11 on the day for Amos. But 11 tough yards. A wing. Flacco the wing. Bura wants to throw. He goes to the far side of the field. Incomplete. He looked for Rick Sirick in the far corner of the end zone, and Brian Bergstrom made a fine defensive play as he went into the air with Rick Sirick and got his hands in there, and Rick could not bring it down. So for Pan, a third down and five, as Gary Bura just took a step back and looked into the end zone. Gary Bura just displaying so much poise. Third down and five, and the wide receivers are split. Bura is back. Bura is looking. Fires incomplete. It's, is it intercepted? Harvard says it is. No, it's just incomplete. The intended receiver was Warren Bueller. The 
pass is incomplete as Andy Nolan stepped in front of him, but the Harvard people were yelling, the Harvard defensive, uh, the Harvard uh, DBs were yelling, we have the ball cleanly, but the official said no. It touched the ground, and Penn on a fourth down and five will set up for a field goal. He gets it down, he kicks it, it's up, and it's good. Gary Gura had a tough time with the snap. And he finally got it down, and Dave Shulman converts on a second field goal of the day. There's a timeout on the field with the score, Pennsylvania 13, Harvard nothing. And coming ever so close to putting more touchdowns on the board, but they have only one of those and a pair of field goals. Here is Shulman's kickoff. It is high and end over end, and taken by Vignoli at the goal line, up across the 5, the 10, the 15. He is hit at the 18 and dragged down on a shoestring tackle by Tim Chambers. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Tom LeMay with the great songs of the 50s and 60s on the memory lane. Evenings from 8 to 11 on 610 WIP. Spot the football at the 19-yard line for Harvard, first and 10. Head up 13 to nothing, 8-14 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, a double wing by Harvard, a single setback, and he gets the ball. Granger does as he comes across the 20, comes across the 25, and drags 10 people almost up to the 30-yard line where Matt Finn finally flattens them. But Granger running very, very hard for Harvard. He is their leading rusher. He entered this game with 294 yards. First and 10 for Harvard. The football on their own 29. The pitch again. The Granger starting to the outside. He won't get far. In fact, he gets little. Gets to the 30. Picks up a yard. That's it. Bill Lista says no more. Bill Lista stops him at the 30. So for Harvard, is second down and nine. Head up 13 to nothing in this game that means at least a tie for the Ivy League title. Vacating the wing and getting the handoff is Scott McCabe. He is tripped up at the 30, comes across the 35, but there's going to be a penalty called, and it appears that it's holding against Harvard. It is. And again, this penalty is going to create a, a difficult situation for Harvard. They've had a little momentum here. They had a great run by Granger on first down. Uh, nice effort that time as the, the offensive back dove forward when he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Allard goes into a long count. Allard retreats. Allard fires over the middle to the cave at the 20-yard line. Bumps into his own man at the 25 and is put down right there. The football comes loose after the whistle. Jim Cook makes the stop. But that play was really botched up. When McCabe hit his own man, he appeared to collide with Jim Garvey at the 25-yard line, and that spoiled it for him. So he picked up six yards on the play, so for Harvard, it'll be a third down and 13, and again, a passing situation. Harvard not using the pass well at all today. In motion comes McCabe. Albert is rolling to the near side of the field. He's looking, pitches the football now to Granger across the 40. Granger at the 45 with a first down for Harvard. So it is Donnie Allard running the quarterback option and running it well. And at precisely the right second, pitching the ball to his trailing back, Mike Granger, who picked up yardage up to the 45-yard line. He needed 13 for a first down, and he had a sizable pickup right there as he picked up 15 yards for a first down. Needed 13, got two to spare. 547 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, the double wing. McCabe comes off the wing, and is he hit? He is hit by David Smith at the line of scrimmage, and does he feel that? David Smith was coming in as McCabe was hitting the line, and Smith just lowered his shoulder and flattened him. 520 remaining to be played in the third quarter. Ranger the lone setback. Allard back. Allard looks to pitch, keeps it himself, and he is sliced off his feet across midfield and Penn territory at the 47 or 46. It was tremendous pressure on Penn's defense. They're going to have to do something to compensate. Third and one for Harvard. The football is fumbled. The football is fumbled, and Harvard has it. Harvard has it. It is recovered by Jim Garvey. It was fumbled as Allard tried to give it to Mike Granger, and the ball came loose, and it was an alert Jim Garvey diving on top of the football, not only recovering it, but giving Harvard a first down. First and 10 for the Crimson. 4-14 remaining. Allard running the option. Fires the football downfield incomplete. He was looking for Steve Ernst on the far side of the field, but even if Ernst had it, uh, even if he had caught it, which he didn't, he would have been out of bounds. So for Harvard, a second down and 10. The football remains at the pen, 39 and a half yard line. Four minutes and three seconds remaining in the third quarter. 
Harvard. Back the throw goes Allard. Allard looking. He's going to run across the 40, and he is belted at the 38 by Kevin Bradley. Boy, does Bradley pop him. Boy, does Kevin Bradley pop Donnie Allard. He paid for that one, and all he picks up is about a yard. That is about it. Or two yards, maybe, as they spot the football now at the 37 and a half. So make it a third down at about eight for Harvard. Third and about eight, but three and a half minutes remaining in quarter number three. Good. Allard is rolling. He pitches the ball over Granger's head. Granger goes back. Fumbles it again at midfield. A fight for the football. Ten got it. Ten got it at the 35-yard line. Recovered by Penn. A big, big play. The football was fumbled by Harvard. There's also a penalty flag down, but Mike Oakland is the man who came up with the football. Mike Christiani was chasing the football. He made a hit. The ball came off his hand, but it was fumbled by Granger, who went back after it, fumbled it again. You have all seen football follies on television. The thing where a pack of people chase the ball, and, and Harvard's being penalized for unnecessary roughness. The football is marched down to the 20-yard line. Black a wing to the far side. The handoff goes to the fullback. It goes to Chuck Nolan, who comes off right tackle, comes across the 20, comes down to about the 17. We are late in the third quarter. Penn is leading Harvard 13 to nothing. And you get the feeling that 13 to nothing might not be enough against this Harvard team. You don't feel safe at 13 to nothing. Second down at eight. Bura gives the ball off to Chuck Nolan again, who breaks the tackle at the 15 and comes far down to the 13 yard line or 12 yard line they spotted at the 12 and he will be about a yard shy of a first down pat fleming makes the stop for harvard so it is third down at about a yard and a half for penn the backs are in the eye the wide receivers are split now the backs shift out of the eye into a set left in motion to the near side comes Rich Searick. Jura is rolling to that side. He's going to run it across the 15, across the 10, across the 8, and down to the 5 goes Gary Jura with a first down. Louis Versada makes the stop for Harvard, but Gary Jura rolled to the near side, and you could sense that he was going to run because there was nobody in front of him. What thoughts he had of passing the football quickly disappeared as he carried for 8 yards on a first down and got a big block from Rich Searick. Rich Searick, the little wide receiver, leveled somebody out of the way. First and goal for the Quakers. They have the ball at the five. O'Toole comes in motion to the far side. The backs are in the eye. The pitch goes to Flacco. Wages his way across the five, but only to the four. Flacco gets only to the four that time as the Harvard defense tightens as it has so often when they are down deep. Warren selecting the right tackle on Joe Asselby made the stop. They spot the football back at the five, so maybe he didn't even get a yard. Second down and goal. The ball at the five, and Penn goes with the full house tee. Full house tee. Jura on play action. Sets up. Close it for the end zone. Intercepted by Harvard. Intercepted by Joe Azelby in the end zone as Gary Jura made a mistake as he looked into the end zone and floated the football. And if he could have brought it back, he would have. But no sooner did it come out of his hands that Joe Azelby appeared at the goal line and picked it off for Harvard. And Harvard has the football back as Azelby brought it all the way back to the 23-yard line, first or 27-yard line, first and 10 for Harvard. Mike Hurst comes in the game for Harvard. So Penn fails to capitalize on what should have been a big break. A double wing, first and 10 for Harvard. The handoff goes to McCabe, who is partly at the 30. The ball comes loose, Penn's on it. Terry McFadden gets it back. The defense is doing it again, ladies and gentlemen. This defense is doing it for Penn here in the second half as they are repeatedly coming up with turnovers. Bill Lister applied the hit. McCabe fumbled the football. On it was Jerry McFadden, and the Penn offense comes back on the field. So turnovers and the defense, you can't say enough about these guys. It's going back and forth and back and forth. I, I don't think I've been as depressed all season as I was when Gary threw that last interception. In motion to the far side goes Sirik. Jura is rolling to the far side, fires to the far side. Sirik catches it over his shoulder, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 22. Mike Dixon makes the stop. But isn't Rich Sirik having a ball game? Picks up only six yards on the fast and short out pattern. 
just a simple short out to Rich Searick, but he was running full speed and did a good job of turning and catching it over his right shoulder. He comes out, Bureau spins, gives to Nolan, across the 20, close to the 15, first down for Penn. 24 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. If anything, at least the offense is chewing up the clock here in this quarter. And Harbor's offense has made some big mistakes. The slot to the near side. The handoff goes inside, and Nolan comes across the 15 down to the 13 on the final play of the third quarter. There it is, the end of the third quarter. One to go. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Pennsylvania 13, Harbor nothing. Back at Franklin Field, Merrill Reese along with Hench Mary. The Penn Quakers are one quarter away from at least a share of the Ivy League title. 15 football minutes away. They are up 13 to nothing, so it is not sealed up. They have a second down and eight. They have the ball on the Harvard 14-yard line. Second and eight. The backs in the eye. Shorty, the tight end, goes in motion to the far side. Play action as Bureau turns, being chased, running, now firing the football, complete at the five-yard line. Five-yard line, he finds his man, Chuck Nolan, and completes it inside the five. So here we go into another first and goal situation. Penn has been in these situations three times today where Harvard has come up with big plays, but here it is, first and goal from the three. One wide receiver. The backs are in the eye. The handoff to Flacco, who tries to barrel his way to the goal line. Gets to the two, maybe the one. We will wait for them to unpile and then spot the football for you. They say he reached... Well, let's see where they put it down. He reached the one and a half. So it is second down and a yard and a half. Second down and goal from the one and a half. Slot to the near side. Sirik, the man in the slot. In motion comes Sirik. The handoff goes to Flacco, who drags people down to the one, maybe. But Flacco collided with Gary Bureau on that play. And it was very fortunate for Penn that the ball did not come loose. There was a, obviously some problem on the on the handoff. There was a collision in the back. A great effort by Flacco to get back to the line of scrimmage. Penn's got to get in here. It is third down at a yard and a half. Zero on a long count. Pitches to Flacco. Oh, Flacco. He's in. He's in. Steve Flacco. Touchdown, Penn. Steve Flacco for the touchdown. And Penn finally does it. They tried once, and they tried again, and they tried again, and finally Steve Flacco went in for the touchdown. It's 19 nothing, Penn, and here is Schulman for the extra point. Give credit to Mark Embro. What a block he threw. And give a lot of credit to Steve Flacco, who would not be stopped. Ball is spotted. The kick is up. It's good. There's a timeout of the field with the score. Pennsylvania 20, Harvard nothing. 13 minutes and 19 football seconds. Keeping Penn from the Ivy League title. They're up 20 to nothing. Here is the short kickoff by Schulman that bounces downfield and goes out of bounds at the 12. So now he will kick it off in the 35 with a penalty. I'm sure lots of teams in history have been called the cardiac kids, but uh, watching these fellows from Pennsylvania week after week get out front, get a lead. We were right in this exact same position last year, or last week rather, against Colgate where they were leading 20 to nothing with about 13 minutes left in the game. They proceeded to make the game exciting. I hope they choose to do differently today. It's interesting that you say last year. Last year at this time, Penn was 1-7. One 1-7. And, seven. One and, seven. and regardless of what happens from here, Jerry Burt has to be one of the Eastern College Coaches of the Year. I mean, he just absolutely has to own one of those awards for his division. What a job he's done. Here is the kick. It's an onside kick. And it is picked up by uh, Mike Ernst at the 35, and he takes it up to the 40. Mike Ernst, the short man for Harvard, picking the ball up and taking it up to the 40. So against the stiff wind, Harvard gets the advantage. Harvard has the wind at its backs. Uh, I think it was intentional not to be an onside kick, but to try to keep it low against the wind, and it was not a very effective kick. Harvard's got good field position here. First and 10 for the Crimson at their own 41, and motion comes Mike Ernst to the near side. Back to throw goes Allard. He's being trapped. He's being sacked. They got him across the 30, back at the 28. Jerry McFadden coming through. The left tackle, he grabs Donnie Allard and spills him across the 30. He absolutely goes 
through Henry Cash. Jerry McFadden, 6'2", 220, just overpowers Henry Cash, who has him by about 12 pounds. Second down and 21 for the Crimson. Back goes Allard, looking for Mike Ernst. Close the pass, complete to Ernst across the 35, and he gets to about the 39-yard line, but not more. Gets close to the original line of scrimmage, where Mike Oaken makes the stop for Penn. That pass took a long time to get to the sideline. Very often, when you measure a quarterback's arm, looking downfield and seeing whether or not he can throw the bomb isn't a really good test. But the measure of an arm is how fast can he throw, how much velocity can he get on that sideline pattern. Here he is on a third down at 11. Allard rolling to the near side. Floats it to the near side. Incomplete. Two men in the same zone colliding that time. Leaping for the football was Jim Garvey and also Granger. Incomplete. Oaken in there, too. Mike Oaken for Penn, but there were two members of the Harvard offense around that football at the same time. Fourth and 11, and Bill of the Wave is in the punt. Waterfield back for Penn. Chambers to the near side. The punt is high, end over end. Chambers calls for a fair catch at the 18-yard line. 11.46 remaining in this football game. It is Penn 20, Harvard nothing. The Quakers break from the huddle. First and 10, the ball on their own 18-yard line. The wide receivers are split. The back shift out of an eye. Wing is Steve Rubin. The handoff to the fullback, Rick Amos, who breaks across the 20. Amos across the 25. Amos to the 27-yard line. Randy Scott makes the stop. Even those who felt that Penn had a shot in this game with Harvard thought that it would be a very, very tight game. They felt that if Penn was to beat the Crimson of Harvard, it would be by a couple of points. A second down and two after the gain of eight by Amos. The handoff this time goes to Rubin. Off left tackle, fumbles the football, Harvard's on it. Steve Rubin with his second fumble of the day, fumbles it at the 28-yard line, and Harvard's Bruno Perdoni comes off with the football. So Harvard has the football again. Steve Rubin had run for the first down, and the ball came loose, his second fumble. The first came on the opening carry of the day, and it comes again, and Harvard has the football first and 10, the ball inside the pen 30. 11.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. Still a lot of time. Steve Ernst comes in motion to the near side. Allard running with the football, looks the pitch, fires the football. Controlled by Ernst inside the 25 to the 22. And let me tell you, Mike Ernst juggled that football and it almost came loose. Ross Armstrong makes the tackle for Penn. The play net seven yards, but the Harvard pitch, the quarterback option as it is being run today, looks uh, highly risky. Second down and three. In motion goes Garvey off the wing to the near side. Play action as Allard fires the football, completes on a quick slam to John O'Brien. Inside the 10-yard line, down at the nine. Nice execution that time by Allard on a little play action. Trap fake upside. He turned, really went around 360 degrees and hit his wide receiver slanting in. I think on the option play, I talked with Ed Zubrow and Wayne Donner, the defensive coaches during the week, and apparently Allard has liked to run that himself, has not pitched very often. The double wing, Garvey goes in motion. The handoff goes to Ernst. Mike Ernst, the fullback, carries it inside the eight, and he is stacked up by Dave Smith at about the six-yard line. So it'll be second down and goal for Harvard. The ball on the six. Second down and goal. The clock continues to tick. 9.45 remaining to be played in this football game. 10 up. 20 to nothing. Allard runs the option again. Pitches the ball off and he will not go. Ernst is stacked up at the nine. If anything, he will lose yardage. As Keenan Nix and Mike Oaken make the stop. You talk about the job of the offense today and how well drilled they have been, and we saw their execution at its peak, particularly in the first half. But this defense did its homework, too. I mean, they are ready for these plays, and they are stopping this option play that Allard likes to run and has run so effectively this season. Third down and goal. Looks through Tucky to the near side. Gives the ball off. No, he doesn't. Takes it back. Fires for the end zone. Touchdown. Peter Cordero, the tight end, was open on play action. A good job of faking by Donnie Allard as he put the ball in the belly of his fullback, Mike Ernest. Took it away. Took two steps back and found Cordero wide open one yard from the base of the end zone. So Harvard finally scores. 20-6. 
Villanueva in to attempt the extra point. Here is the extra point, and Villanueva boots it cleanly up through the uprights, and it is 20 to 7. There is a penalty flag down, but I believe it will be after the uh, after the kick. It will be marked off on the ensuing kickoff. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remain here in the football game. It is Penn 20, Harvard 7, and Penn was penalized for roughing the kicker. But let's see if. Harvard doesn't try something here. He tries the short kick and is fielded cleanly by Penn. However, at the 25-yard line, one of the up men for Penn, simply Warren Bueller, just got under the football as Penn is wide to those things and will put receivers up in position to field that uh, onside kick. And Warren Bueller feels it cleanly for Penn. Flacco is a wing to the far side. Rick Amos, the lone setback, the handoff to Amos, who comes across the 25. And has he ever hit hard right there? His Harvard defense wants to stop that Penn offense in three plays. They don't want any quicker drives as Penn can just take the clock away from Harvard who needs two touchdowns to take charge of this game. 8-14 remaining. Euro on play action, being chased, still being chased, rolling to the far side, keeping himself across the 25, across the 30, and out of bounds at the 31-yard line goes Gary Bura as he had Joe Azelby almost within arm's distance as Azelby was bearing down from behind, chased him out of bounds, but Gary Bura picked up six or seven yards, so for Penn, a third down and two. Bura on a quarterback keeper, spins forward, leans forward, and backs forward, and I don't know if he made it. We'll see. Gary Bura seemed stopped initially, and then he twisted and turned and leaned forward with his back, and I don't know. I don't think he made it. He did not make it. He will come up a yard short, and Penn will have to punt. Dave Bonamore in the punt. It is blocked by Harvard. It still bounces forward, and it is recovered by Harvard at the 43-yard line. Pat Fleming was the man who blocked that punt. It could have been disastrous, but he did not block it towards the goal. He more deflected it heavily. He deflected the ball, and it rolled forward across the 40-yard line, and it came to rest at the 46-yard line. First and 10 for Harvard at the pen, 43. Allard wants to throw. He fires it incomplete. Allard was looking for John O'Brien at the pen, 30-yard line, and Mike Oaken filled the zone right there and banged it away. Second and 10 for the Crimson at the pen, 43. So it again is the defense with the pressure to weather. 7.20 remaining in this football game, 10 up, 20 to 7. Now in motion comes Garvey. Back goes Allard, has time, fires, completes the pass to Steve Burns at the 35, Burns at the 30, Burns for the first down at the pen, 28 before Jim Cook makes the stop. A lot of credit that time to the Harvard offensive line, giving Allard a lot of time to look at his receivers. They're sending five people down the field, and Penn's got to rely on that pass rush. We've been in this situation so many times this season. Somebody's got to make a big play and get the momentum back, and that's been typical of Penn's defense all year. Let's see if they can continue here. We're inside the seven-minute mark. On motion goes Steve Earth to the far side of the field. Granger is the setback as Allard spins, floats the pass, completes to John O'Brien at the 10. He's taken out of bounds at the 8. Tim Chambers bounces John O'Brien out of bounds, but Harvard has moved quickly, and they are inside the Penn 10-yard line with 6.41 remaining, and this drive has taken very little time. Penn is far from being out of the woods. First and goal for Harvard. Allard on first down gives the ball off to Mike Ernst, who carries inside the five down close to the four. Ernst on the carry. David Smith makes the stop. We have six and a half minutes remaining in this game. Six and a half minutes. O'Brien spun out to the far side, a double wing. Allard is rolling. Allard has a man. Harvard has a touchdown. Stevens the receiver. Allard faked it inside, and Steve Ernst was wide open in the end zone. And things get more and more tense here at Franklin Field. Things get more and more tense as Harvard connects right there. And they are now within a touchdown. 20 to 13. Here is the extra point by Villanueva. It's good. It's good. About six minutes remaining to be played. It is Penn 20 and Harvard 14. Well, Penn football has given everybody more than they can handle. What an afternoon. What a season it has been for Penn. But here they are trying to lock up an Ivy League title. Things look comfortable just a matter of minutes ago. 
ten was up 20 to nothing. And here we are with six minutes remaining in this football game. And it's 20 to 14. Here is the kickoff by Villanueva. No onside kick this time as Glenn Shagney backs up and feels it eight yards deep in the end zone. And he will not bring it out. They will march it out to the 20-yard line. So buckle up the seatbelts and get set for a very, very tense six minutes. First and ten for the Quakers at the 20. Back shift out of the eye into a set left. Flacco in a tailback. Now Gary drew a close to pass for Flacco, who comes across the 20 up to the 24. And that was dangerous right there as they had shifted out of the eye and had Flacco set to the left. And Gary Bura fired the football high. Flacco reached up and brought it down with his fingertips, actually. And if that ball had come loose, it would have been easy picking for Harvard. Second down on six for the Quakers. Backs are in the eye. Bureau on play action is rolling to the near side. Looking. Fires incomplete. What a Chuck Nolan, the fullback. Nolan could not hang on. Chuck Nolan, the intended receiver. Pat Fleming putting an awful lot of pressure on Gary Bura. And talk about pressure. The situation means pressure right here. Because the pen offense has to feel that they have to continue this drive. They have to move the football. There are five minutes and 17 seconds remaining in this game. And back goes goes Bura. Back goes Bura. He's looking. He fires. Incomplete and almost picked off. Almost picked off as Kevin Garvin, Harvard's Kevin Garvin, was over anxious as he raced for the football and was too animated as he tried to bring it in because if he had just kept his poise, he could have fielded it, almost called for a fair catch and run 25 yards for a touchdown. The pen has to punt. Sam Coronati back to return as Bottomore does a decent job of getting it away and Coronati calls for a fair catch at the Harvard 44-yard line. So against the win, Bottomore does a pretty good job right there. One of the difficult things with a pass-oriented offense is when you get down to the last few minutes of the game, you're trying to sustain the ball and get your committed to throwing it. When you throw the incompletions, you stop that clock. And Penn chewed up a little over a minute in that four snaps of the ball. Harvard's got plenty of time here to, to fool around with it. The handoff goes inside and shoving and pushing people as Mike Ernst across the 45 up to the 49-yard line. David Smith makes the stop for Penn. Coronati, the Penn punter, doing a pretty decent job. That was his first punt. Bottomores was blocked the last time he did it. They brought in Carnati. Harvard second down and five. Allard rolling. Allard fires a pass. Caught down the far side by John O'Brien. A one-handed catch inside the 30 at the 28. What a tremendous catch by John O'Brien, who leaped into the air, threw up a hand, and brought it in. It is inside the 30 at the pen, 26 and a half. 4.23 remaining, first and 10, Harvard. First and 10 on the pen, 27. O'Brien splits to the near side. Allard fakes, gives off inside. Garvey, the wingback, takes it across the 25, and then most of the defense bangs him back at the 22. Jerry McFadden leaves that Penn defense, gang tackling that time. Four minutes and eight seconds, 4.07, but the Harvard offense has plenty of time. The Penn defense has to stop them. It'll be a second down and five, and Mike Granger comes back in the game for Harvard. The lone setback, double wing. Motion is Ernst. Allard is rolling to the near side. Allard is being chased, gets away from the rush. He's looking, he fires, completes the pass to Quartararo, and a penalty flag goes down. Quartararo comes up with a catch at the 10-yard line, and there is a penalty flag down. Let's see who it's against. It is going to be against Harvard, an illegal receiver downfield. Allard, who was miserable in the first half, is now 10 for 17. He's back. He floats the pass. Has Granger open at the 20. Granger down to the 15. Granger down to the 15 on a third down at 10. They get Mike Granger out of the open, and he comes up with a first down. 3-13 remaining. 3-13 and Harvard in the first and 10. The ball on the 15. No, Granger comes back. He takes the handoff. Drags people across the 15. Down close to the 12. Mike Granger. Christiani makes the stop for Penn. Granger, 13 carries, 91 yards. Out of the game comes Granger. Back in replacing him is Mike Ernst. 2.42 remaining. Ernst, Allard runs the keeper. Across the 10, across the 8, across the 5. And he is knocked down. Let's see where they spotted it about the 3-yard line. The clock will stop. 
the clock will stop as Donnie Allard, who has come into his own after a poor first half, has played a splendid second half, and Harvard has a first and goal at the two. A first and goal at the two. Now they start the clock. They had stopped it to move the yard markers. Apparently, he did not make it out of bounds. We will tick down inside the two-minute mark. In motion to the far side goes Steve Ernst. Allard hands the ball off to Granger, who is thrown back at the five. Granger stopped at the five as the Penn defense was ready. Kevin Bradley and Joe Lorenz made the stop. 142. Harvard will call for a timeout. Wow. What a game. 142 remaining. 10 up 20 to 14. And it all boils down to the defense. Allard buys them up. In motion comes Garvey. Allard rolling to the far side. Still rolling. Carrying the football. Knocked out of bounds at the three by Joe Lorenz. So it'll be a third down and five, or third down and goal for Harvard at the three. Third down and goal for Harvard at the three. 137 remaining in this football game. 137, a third down and goal for Harvard. Again, a double wing. Allard backs up. He looks. He fires. The ball is dropped in the end zone. Incomplete. And Pendleton got O'Brien, who could not hold on to the face of the end zone. And Harvard has a fourth down and goal at the three. sideline could not come up with that one fourth down goal to go from for harvard allard up and over allard running with the football catches the ball out to granger who runs in for the touchdown granger runs in for the touchdown and harvard takes the lead harvard takes the lead as mike granger took the pitch from donnie allard and went outside and ran in for the touchdown and Villanueva kicks the extra point, which is up and good. So Harvard leads 21 to 20, but there is still plenty of time. A minute and 28 seconds remaining. When I say plenty of time, of course, I am talking in terms of time needed for Penn to get close enough to have a shot at a field goal. This one is not over yet. Here is the kickoff. It is short. It bounces across the 5 and it, or 15 or across the 10 and then goes out of bounds. So that won't help Harvard as Villanueva will now kick off with a penalty. That'll move him back 5 yards. And, of course, Villanueva is a straight-on kicker. And apparently that time he didn't hit the ball correctly. I don't think he was trying to slice it or trying to, to do anything fancy. Here is Villanueva. It is high and end over end. Glenn Shagney takes it at the end zone. He brings it out across the 5, across the 10, 15, and he is tackled at the 20. So Glenn Shagney hesitated as he went four yards deep and then decided to bring it out. But uh, it's about the same as it is at the 20-yard line or just inside. Greg Euchre makes the stop for Harvard. First and 10 for Penn, 124 remaining the ball at the 20. Penn offense. The wind in their faces. Gary Bura lines them up. He splits his wide receivers. The backs are in the eye. In motion goes Jeff Schulte, the tight end to the far side. Jura goes back on play action. He's being chased. He rolls to the far side, still rolling. Carries the football, is hit at the 22-yard line. Andy Nolan makes the stop. Gary Bura was nearly sacked that time. All he does is pick up a couple of yards, maybe a yard, and the clock continues to tick. 1-11 remaining, 1-10. 10 sets up without a huddle. Slot formation at the near side of the field. The backs are set in the eye. Gary Bura looks over the defense, in motion goes Flacco, Bura is rolling, Bura is being chased, and Bura is sacked this time at the 13-yard line, and the clock shows 52 seconds remaining, and the Penn offense will call for a timeout, third and 15. As the Penn offense huddles on the sideline with the offensive coaches trying to decide what they're going to do here on third down, I think we have to remember that Harvard has scored their 21 points here in the fourth quarter with the wind at their backs. Here it is, third down and 15, the wide receivers are split, the backs are on the eye, play action is Bureau retreats. Bureau is looking. He's being chased. Still looking. Fires. A diving reception made by Rich Sirik across the 30 with a first down at the 32. Rich Sirik out of no place. And shaken up on the play is Gary Bureau. Bureau was shaken up. He was hit hard as he released the football. Well, a pickup on the play of 18 yards and a first down as Rich Sirik comes up with a great catch. 34 seconds remaining. Let's see what Rafiti can do. 
Ben Rafini goes back, fires to the sideline, incomplete out of bounds, stops the clock with 24 seconds left. Stops the clock with 24 seconds left, second down and 10. And back into the game comes now Gary Bura. Only the tight end is winged in motion. Now comes in motion to the near side as Bura retreats on play action. Floats it over the middle. Incomplete. And now it is complete. It's the second man catches the ball. Warren Bura was hit. The ball came out of his hands and Rich Sierra caught it. 17 seconds left. As Rich Sierra comes up with his fifth reception, give an assist to Warren Bura, the intended receiver. And Penn will call a timeout with 17 seconds left. And the ball on Harvard's 48. Penn is one long reception away for winding up for a field goal attempt. I don't believe this game. I don't believe the way this game is developing. The ball at the 48 of Harvard. In motion comes Flacco. Gary Bure is rolling to the far side. He's looking, rolling, fires the ball. Complete to Warren Bueller. Warren Bueller inside the 35 and kills the clock when he steps out of bounds at the 32. Ten seconds left. Ten seconds left. 32-yard line. If they were going in the other direction, I would give a field goal a chance. But they are going against a very stiff wind. And it is not realistic to believe that David Schulman would have a chance from here. 10 seconds left. 10 leads about 15 yards. Gary Burek rolling, being chased, fires a pass, completes the pass, and being taken down at the 20-yard line. Three seconds left. Flacco at the 20. And the Quakers are not going to let this game go. David Schulman is going to come onto the field and try the biggest kick of his life. Three seconds remaining. The ball will be spotted at the 28-yard line. It's spotted. The kick is away, and it is fading. It is fading. It is no good. But there is a penalty play. We will wait. The kick is away. It's long enough. It's good. Penn wins. Penn wins. Penn wins the Ivy League title. Penn wins the Ivy League title. I don't believe it. Penn wins the Ivy League title. Penn wins the Ivy League title 23-21. They are bombing David Schumann. The Harvard player, the Harvard player that just flying on the field. The Harvard player, Penn can't believe it. Penn can't believe it. Penn wins the Ivy League title. What an incredible afternoon. What an incredible for the Ivy League title. I do not believe this game. I absolutely, positively do not believe this sequence of events. Absolutely incredible as David Schulman kicks a 27-yard field goal and then wins the Ivy League title. Wow. We will try to compose ourselves. I have a feeling we will not do that. We will be back at the wrap-up in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, back in 1978, I had the opportunity to broadcast one of the strangest football finishes I have ever seen. It was the famous miracle of the Meadowlands game where the Eagles stole a game from the New York Giants. The Bazarczyk fumble picked up by Herman Edwards, 46 yards. You know that story. This game, in terms of strange finishes, in, in terms of the unusual, the unbelievable, the unexpected, ranks right up there with that one. They are rocking the goalpost. The field is covered. It is a mass of humanity here at Franklin Field. As Penn seemingly had the 
this game wrapped up. They led 20 to nothing in this fourth quarter. Harvard came charging back, making clutch catch after clutch catch. Big play after big play. And with under a minute remaining, or just over a minute remaining, they scored the touchdown that had seemingly given them the lock on the Ivy League title. Penn faced not only a big physical Harvard defense, but they faced an incredibly strong wind. And as I look here from the south stands, the flags are still almost standing straight as they are blowing furiously in the direction from which Penn was coming, trying to move the ball. On one play, Gary Bureau was shaken up. Rich Sirek made a diving catch to sustain one drive. On another drive, the ball popped out of the arms of Warren Bueller, the wide receiver, and out of nowhere, there was Rich Sirek, that man on the spot once again. Penn came down. We knew they would have to get awfully close for a field goal attempt because of that win. Then they came down, and he attempted the long one. I watched the ball fade, 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 when all of a sudden there were a bunch of Penn people jumping up and down on the field, and a personal foul penalty had been called against Harvard. And on a 27-yard field goal attempt, a ball that really didn't rise quickly, it somehow went over the crossbar, and Penn clinched a tie for the Ivy League title.